So now that I have the heater hung on the ceiling, the next thing I'm going to do is install the venting. And the thing I like about this heater for the price at just under $500 is that you can run it in two different modes. And those are typical and separated combustion mode. In the typical mode, the heater is drawing in whatever air is available in the garage here and then it's exhausting through a flue to the outside. And in the separated combustion mode, the heater is drawing in fresh air from the outside and then also exhausting to the outside through a flue. In order to run this heater in the separated combustion mode, I had to buy what's called a concentric vent kit. Part number is AS-X7-4. And this kit is made for both the Sterling and the Beacon Morris heaters. They're both made by Mestec and they're essentially the same heaters. So here briefly are the contents of the concentric vent kit. That's the combustion air inlet box. There's some gasket material. Terminal that goes on the end of the flue pipe. There's the air inlet screen. Some more gaskets. This is the air inlet collar that goes on the back of the heater. High temperature RTV silicone and the deflector disc. So this heater can be vented horizontally or vertically so through the wall or through the roof. And a newer code requirement is that you install UL1738 special gas pipe for the flue. So I bought this kit here at littlegreenhouse.com that includes all the pipe you'll need for horizontal venting. I'll start right there with the 36 inch section of that special gas pipe. There's a 24 inch section. There's an adapter that goes on the back of the heater. There's some extra gasket material there. And then they provide some single wall pipe. This is a 7 inch 2 foot long section. And these two are 4 inch 2 foot long sections. I decided to vent vertically instead of going horizontal through the wall because I don't have a whole lot of wall space left in this garage. So I had to buy a few additional items in order to do that. I'll start over here with the special gas vent T, the cap that goes on the bottom of that T, standard single wall T, cap for that T, 7 inch single wall flashing, 7 inch single wall storm collar, and then to replace the 7 inch 2 foot section I bought a 7 inch 3 foot section of that standard duct there. If you're venting vertically, the one thing I will caution you about is that if you install the heater to where the special gas vent T is more than two feet from the roof, the pipe that's included in the pipe kit will not be long enough. So it may be to your advantage to just buy all the special gas vent pipe separately. All right, before I get started here, what I wanted to show is how this concentric vent kit looks when it's all assembled. So it starts with the heart of the system, which is the combustion air inlet box. That's the air intake pipe that connects to the back of the heater and also to the box. This is the flue pipe that goes through the box here and terminates outside the building. That's the terminal there. There's a deflector disc. This is the 7 inch pipe which would normally be longer than what they're showing in the picture here. And on the end of that pipe is the air inlet screen. So how this works, the air is drawn in here goes into the intake and then the gases are exhausted out this flue here and outside the building. So here's that same picture but in a diagram form. Uh, this is the horizontal vent situation here and there are a lot of measurements as you can see here like the quarter inch per foot to the outside and there's some measurements for the distance between the deflector disc and the terminal and the deflector disc in the air inlet screen. One other thing that may be required in your local area is a wall thimble so that's something I would check out also. Okay so here's the vertical venting diagram and the few key items that are mentioned there are to make sure that the flashing is installed and to make sure that the 7 inch pipe extends two feet above the roof surface or the maximum snow depth in your local area whichever is greater. And then the other thing that's mentioned down below is that you have to slope the horizontal runs of pipe a quarter inch per foot towards the inlet cap. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is install the flue pipe that goes on this port right here. And this is the adapter right here. 
This adapter didn't fit very snugly when I put it on the first time, so I wrapped one turn of the foil tape around this pipe to get a little tighter fit on here. I've attached the T to the adapter. Then I've also attached the cap at the bottom here. So this goes on like that. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is checking for plumb at this T here because I don't want the pipe to go through the roof at an odd angle. And what I had thought to do was to put this cap on the bottom so I could put my torpedo level across these two ridges here. But it appears that this one actually sticks out a little bit more. It's not a whole lot, but I didn't want to rely on that. So what I decided to do instead is use one of these post levels that I have, put it up against there, and then use the bubble on the back to check for plumb. Okay, so what I'm doing right now on the roof is finding the center point of the pipe that's going to attach to this T here. And what I've done, a little bit more anal probably than I need to be, is I've taken a piece of cardboard. It's the same diameter as this pipe here. And I put it on top and it just made a crosshairs so I know where the center is. And what I'll do next is take a plumb bob and find the center point. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is make a hole in the roof. So I sat down to diagram that out to make sure I understand how big that hole needs to be. Uh, the pitch in my case is 512, meaning that for every 12 inches of run, the roof rises 5 inches. So it's not all that steep a roof. But if it were a much steeper roof, like for example a 10-12 pitch, I'd have to make sure that I'd really plot that out and make the hole big enough so that I have a consistent one inch gap between the pipe and the, the hole that I make in the roof. So as you can see here I have a bunch of measurements and I use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out how big the hole needed to be. So the hole you see there is an ellipse which is a little more exaggerated than the actual hole I'm going to make in the roof but you kind of get the idea. Okay so here's a template I made out of cardboard for the hole that I'm going to cut in the roof. So you can see the basic 9 inch circle, that's the pencil lines here and here. And then I gradually drew an elliptical shape here and down here. And that's 9 and 3 quarters of an inch from this point here to that point up there. And it almost matches the flashing that I'll be installing. This is uh, for 5 12 pitch roofs. I've attached a couple blocks to the roof trusses so I can hang the concentric vent box. So they're right there and right there. So I drilled a 1 8 inch hole at the point that I had marked on the bottom of the roof. And then I pushed a white wire through that hole so I could find it. And what I'm doing here is centering my template on the hole using a nail. And then I'll trace around the template using a crayon. I drilled a 5 16 hole inside the lines that I drew so I could insert the blade of the jigsaw. Then I proceeded to cut out the opening. I went through five jigsaw blades because I didn't realize that I had two layers of roof shingles. And I actually had to cut out the last part of the opening using a handsaw. I'm pointing out the three nails I had to remove so I could install the flashing. And as you can see, I also traced on the roof around the flashing so I knew exactly where it would sit. I'm using a utility knife with a hook blade to cut back the roof material a little bit so that I have a bit of a gap between the roofing and the flashing. And I'm using a scrap piece of roof material to protect the roofing underneath. I'm applying some roofing cement on the shingles where the flashing is going to sit on top and I probably should have applied a little bit of roof cement at the bottom edge there but it should be okay. Here are the flashings being slid into place and centered over the hole that I made and then I'll 
install two nails on either side of that flashing opening and then three at the bottom. Okay, so I'm in the process of locating the combustion air inlet box against the roof. I want to make sure that I center that large opening you see there on the hole that I've made in the roof. And then I'll attach the box to the blocking using these Simpson strong tie straps that I've bent to use as brackets. Part number is LSTA12. Got these at Home Depot. And as you can see there, one is longer than the other because of the pitch of the roof. And I'll just attach these straps to the box using sheet metal screws. I installed the 7 inch pipe on the combustion air inlet box making sure it's nice and plumb. And one thing to remember is to apply high temperature RTV silicone at the joint between the combustion air inlet box and the 7 inch pipe. Next I'm installing the air inlet screen and I'm securing it with three sheet metal screws spread out equidistant from each other. So now I'm, I'm installing the orange gaskets and one goes on the inner part of the deflector disc the second gasket goes in the air inlet screen and the third gasket goes on the bottom of the combustion air inlet box okay so here's the length of special gas pipe and one of the sections is actually adjustable so I can adjust the length of the pipe a little bit. In order to install the special gas pipe I had to remove the T first and then carefully slide the pipe up through the bottom of the combustion air inlet box and not disturb the gasket that's installed. I also had to go back up on the roof and temporarily remove the air inlet screen so I could slide the special gas pipe up through the 7 inch pipe. Then the two extra blue gaskets I mentioned early on slide into the orange gaskets on the bottom of the combustion air inlet box and the top of the air inlet screen respectively. I also took the opportunity to slide the 7 inch storm collar over the 7 inch pipe before I installed the deflector disc. The one peculiar thing about the instructions is that they mention installing the deflector disc 2.5 inches above the air inlet screen. But as you can see in this picture, the brackets on the deflector disc are about 3 and an eighth of an inch long. So I ended up cutting those down to a little less than 2 and a half inches, and then I added an extra hole so I could install the deflector disc on the special gas pipe. I'm back on the roof and I've placed some 2 and a half inch spacer blocks between the deflector disc and the air inlet screen so I can maintain the proper spacing while I screw the deflector disc to the special gas pipe. And I use sheet metal screws to do that. Here I'm wrapping some tape around the special gas pipe so I can apply some high temperature RTV silicone and leave a nice clean edge. To finish this off, I'm installing the terminal and cinching the clamp with a 516 nut driver. The last thing I did here was apply some flashing sealant to the 7 inch pipe seam and the gap between the storm collar and the 7 inch pipe. I also put some roofing cement on the three nails that are exposed and under the shingles that overlap the flashing. So now that the fluid pipe is done, I'm working on the air intake pipe. So I've taken the screen off the back of the heater where the air intake is located and I've attached the air inlet collar. So here's a T that I'll be installing and I need to space this T off the back of the heater a little bit with some single wall pipes so that I can install the gas line later. 
Since I'm spacing the T off the back of the heater, I had to use a couple swivel connectors so I could connect up to the combustion air inlet box above. Here are the crimpers I used to crimp some of the pipe ends. Once I got everything all lined up, I installed three sheet metal screws at every joint spread out equidistant from each other. To complete the installation, I wrapped two turns of metal foil tape around each joint. 